Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Beer Garden again. And this time, we are going to talk about the Happy Valley opener. There will be、uh, eight races tonight at Happy Valley. Today, we have Steve and Nathan with myself talking about our banker and selections in our selected. Races. So, but、uh, first of all, let me talk about the weather first because、uh, last time、uh, when at, it was the season opener at Shatin, and the ground was a bit soft because、uh, the rain was still heavy. But now it's all good. The weather is back to normal. So the going in、uh, tonight's Happy Valley meeting is expected to be good. So let's hope for a dry、uh, Happy Valley opener tonight. So.、Uh, So maybe let us start with、um, Nathan. Your selection is the、uh, first one among three of us. So which race you are going to talk about, Nathan? Yeah, we'll go to race number three on the program. It's amazing what the track managers do at, over in、uh, Hong Kong with Bo Sha Tin and Happy Valley in terms of the、mm. ground, but turning into good ground. You know, over here, if it was any sort of rain like that, it'd be a heavy ten anywhere in Australia. <laughs> but it's awesome to see、yeah. that the、uh, the ground's drawing up. So hopefully that's a benefit for all the runners and hopefully safe passage for all this evening. We'll go to race number three though, where I've got my best bet running around in that race. So I figured that'd be a good race to cover and get、uh, your guys' perspective on as well. Uh, the third race, it's a twelve hundred meter race, class four here for the sprinters. A lot of them, obviously, all of them making their return from last season. The one that I've got on top, though, and the one that I think's got a lot of progression and upside、uh, coming into this season is number one, Denfield, and that's my best bet for tonight. Yes, it's got to carry the top weight here with one hundred and thirty-five pounds on its back. Karis Teton takes the reins for Dan- Danny Shum, but I thought the end of last season, Vincent Ho actually rode this horse to victory. In very impressive fashion, went on to score by two point seven five lengths. Gave him an absolute shellacking that night. That was on the twenty eighth of June. I thought it was a really nice win.、Uh, does get some significant weight for that win, and I think it earns it in a field like this. Draws perfectly, in my opinion, in gate number three.、Uh, this、uh, deep field gelding and looks like it's returning in pretty good order as well. I like the tick over trial between that win and the start of the season. So I think he's got this horse going very, very well. Prior to that, he'd been sort of the the, the eye catch. Galloper, you wanted to take out, but he hadn't quite gone on with the job. I thought it was impressive to see him go out and actually do it and win. He'd drawn awkwardly as well、uh, prior to that. He'd drawn barriers twelve, ten, and twelve、uh, before that victory. So I thought it was more of a、uh, a victim of circumstance, Denfield, that he wasn't putting those wins on the board. Now that he's got that win, I think it's a big confidence builder heading into Wednesday night. And I think he's going to be very, very hard to beat from the draw. Just sort of sit back, one-one position from gate three with a bit of speed on as well. The horses like Mega Bonus and Charming Steed going forward. So I think it sets up really nicely for a back marker, and the best of those I think is Denfield. I think even money that's probably about right for his chances in a race like this. I think he's going very, very well. The two horses that I'm going to, so I made that my banker. The two horses I'm going to make my selections in the race that I think can really, really、um, uh, sort of chase him down and be the, the dangers late. And that's number two. Snow a lot. This horse has been going outstanding as well.、Uh, ever since arriving at David Hayes Yard, he rarely misses the frame. I thought he ended the preparation really nicely. Went up to sixteen fifty, ran into Concerto, who had started to put that picket fence together. He put two or three wins back to back at the end of last season, and I loved his little tick over trial between runs as well. Coming into this preparation, Lyle Hewitson takes the reins. He knows this horse very well as well. He's ridden this horse now eight times for two wins and two minors. So if there's a key danger. I think it's snow a lot. I really like this horse going、uh, in this race as well. And then the other horse that I want to give a spruik to is number three, Lucky Archangel. Now, I, I tipped him up last time where he jumped back in the class four. He actually took on Watch Buddy. He was no chance from where he was on the run. I thought he was enormous from Barrier Ten on that occasion. He went back. He flew home. And now this time, a nice little tick over trial comes here. Uh, off the 69 day break, and I, I think from barrier five, Hugh Bowman takes the reins. I think he can just sit quietly. Another one that'll be flying home late if they go a little bit quick、uh, in this race, and probably sits a little bit closer from barrier five as opposed to barrier ten last time. So lucky Archangel, another one of those key dangers. But I'm I'm pretty keen to be chips in on Denfield in this race and try and get the best bet home pretty early in the card in the third race of, of the program. Yeah, that's good. I like it. You know,、uh, these three horses, Dan Fields, Snow Lord, and Lucky Archangel, are exactly my、uh, three top three choices in this race. So、uh, I will also be quite looking forward to them, especially Dan Fields, quite impressive last time out, and also Snow Lord, always being a consistent horse, and Lucky Archangel, I believe. He is really ex-、uh, competitive at the current rating, but、uh, just a short out of an outsider number six daily trophy. 
this horse has a four year old, he gained 20 pounds after the summer break. So I will also keep my eyes on how he will improve. So uh, what about you, Steve? What do you think about race three, which horse you like? It's hard to go against Denfield, isn't it? He's um, just a progressive looking, progressive looking animal, just seven local runs and bettered the, the head second to Flaming Passion with that very good win over Joy Cumming, who runs in race number four on the card. Went up nine pounds, as uh, Nathan alluded to, but he's well capable of defying that. Nicely drawn, as I like put on board. And unless, you know, we, we saw Greenwich um, last week, be a bit tardy from the gates and couldn't quite get there, you you, for, for someone who's looking for a, a horse with maybe a bit more value, you're kind of looking for that because um, otherwise Denfield looks like he has a, a very good chance. I went myself for Lucky Archangel, which uh, Nathan has already mentioned. An interesting horse. He's a, a three times course and distance winner. And he's a bit in the wilderness towards the end of last season, but he did um, finish well in the fifth of 12 over course and distance when he was unlucky in the run. And uh, he was drawn, he was um, off a mark of 59 that day, two pounds lower now, 57. He's um, pretty well handicapped. And I, I think he's an interesting horse under Hubo. So that'd be the one I like. I think I'd also give a quick mention to um, it's uh, Torbjorn. He's an interesting horse. He started out with Danny Shum, got off the mark over course and distance on his second local start. Hasn't done a great deal since. But for a six year old, he's very likely a race with only 15 starts. And he returned last season with an excellent second to winning IC. And he was unlucky next time, if you remember, sixth of nine to Adios under Harry Bentley. I remember the commentators saying he ran into a cul-de-sac and um, as the race mm. called described it. And then he was third to excellent peers. And look where that one's gone. It rocketed up the ratings. So these were good. And then he, he said kind of lost his way, but he made his debut for Benny Young in July, a rather nondescript run on his debut, but uh, he won his latest trial over the 1,000 metres at Chongfa. So, although I think Denfield is the likely winner, I just went for a bit of value with Lucky Angel, Hugh Bowman up, and maybe I'm interested to see how it Jed Torbion does on his second run for his um, new trainer, Benno Young. Yeah, that's perfect. So, uh, let me recap Nathan's pick in race number three. Uh, Nathan's banker will be number one, Denfield, with the selection of number two, Snow Lot, and number three, Lucky Archangel. So the next race we are going to talk about will be Steve's selection. Which race you are going to talk about? Well, there's quite a few races. I could easily have gone to race number seven with Heroic Master, but um, we shall. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we shall go. Yeah. We shall go with race number six and um, gorgeous mm. vitality. I always seem to pick horses about me. I don't know why. But, um, yes, gorgeous fatality. A really um, interesting horse. He, he made his belated seasonal return last December, um, and, and he, he failed to build on some early promise. His first three runs were really interesting. Third of 12 to California Deeply, fifth of 12 to Pretty Queen Pro, and then third of 12 to Atomic Force. And uh, but he kind of fell away after that. And as a consequence, the, the, the handicapper has given him a, a pretty good opportunity now. He's competes in Class 4 company for the first time in 16 months. And I liked his recent trial, confirms his um, well-being. And his one-time rating of 71, it's better than any of his rivals can boast. He has uh, 134 pounds to, to lug around, but he carried 133 when defeating Yellowfin by three and a half lengths last year. And he's bagged the rail draw under Matthew Chadwick who I always think is a jockey with few equals in sprint races at the Valley. So that's the, the aspect I like. I like his rail draw. I like the fact that in his pump, he was better than any of these other horses. Frankie Law, great trainer. And uh, I think he could just um, catch him early. And he might just be too good for these with, um, with the camel waters of a class four. Other horses, I thought his talent got off the mark for Casper Founds. Three runs back with a, a head defeat of Super Axiom over track and trip. The runner-up game his revenge next time. But Ace, Ace Talent ran well for second. And he was slightly disappointing when fourth to fast serve on his final run of the season. But it was start 12, so perhaps he needed a break. Gate 9 is tricky on Wednesday, but Brenton Abdullah is a good booking. And finally, I think we have to mention Pachisi, interesting horse for Jamie Richards, and Purton rides him for the third time. He's a diminutive horse. He's the smallest in the lineup, only £995, so the latest lining up. And he's been really had terrible barriers in five runs, drawn 7, 12, 8, 10, and now um, gate 11. But Zach Purton, who better to um, 
to have on your side when you have a high barrier. You'll likely drop him in. And you ran well on his local debut when third to Faribo and on the A course, which he encounters tomorrow. And he trailed nicely at Chong Far as well. So that's a three for me. I like Gorgeous Vitality dropping in class. Eight ta ace talent could go well at a price. And Pachisi, this is his fifth run. So one of the more unexposed um, horses in the lineup for Jamie Richards and uh, Zach Burton. Yeah, that's great. So there were two gorgeous fatality. He is also trained by Frankie Law. I think uh, this stable is going to send a lot of good horses tonight at Happy Valley. So let's keep our eyes on Frankie Law stable. And yes, number seven, Ace Talent, also a great one. Uh, last season, he won over the same course and distance. And Pachesi, despite the wide draw, I believe he is still able to show a great turn of foot in the home straight. So these three horses, are, I also quite like them. Uh, I quite mentioned to number one, Super Commander, because he a uh, good draw for him as well, Gates number three, and he is expected to be the leader in this field. And also, he won on debut uh, last uh, season. So maybe first up is quite good for him. So hopefully, uh, Gorgeous Fatality will run well with a good draw. I also like him as well. And Nathan, what do you think about this race? Any other horse you would like to shout out? Yeah, well, I'm going to echo the similar sentiments to both of you. I, I think Gorgeous Vitality is a very good bet here. Well found, I'll say, at the price. I think it's definitely short enough at around the 4.6, but back in grade, I think there's a lot to like, uh, particularly with that barrier trial under his belt as well. I, I thought it was a nice piece of work. Seems to be travelling really, really well. The inside draw is a massive benefit here from gate one. They can jump, put themselves there just in behind the lead. D ditto with Steve on top. I'm, I'm pretty keen with uh, Gorgeous Vitality. I think the best horse in the race, and the other one I want to have a bet on, is Pachisi. I think this horse has got so much upside. I just wish it didn't draw 11. That's my only query. Where does he get for to from the gate? Do they go straight back? Does Perton try and sort of go forward and sit out on a limb? I'm not sure. But I do think Pachisi is the, the most talented horse in the race and maybe the best horse in the race moving forward in terms of pr progression uh, with upside uh, moving forward. And as I said, last preparation, every time I see Purton and Jamie Richards in the form book, I give them a length or two because I think when they see them combining, they usually got a pretty nice horse. Pachisi, uh, I think, again, is another one that can we can definitely follow with confidence. But they're the main two for me. And then I, I tend to agree with Shireen that Super Command is a very intriguing runner. 5.5 at the moment on the Jockey Club website. And I think that's probably about right for a horse. He went out a winner. thought it was a nice win as well. And comes here under with some good barrier trials under its belt as well. So if there's a horse that, you know, sort of sneaks under the radar a little bit in terms of, I actually thought it would come up favourite. It's probably that one, uh, Super Commander, with just how well he finished off the, the campaign. But I, I'm pretty keen with Gorgeous Vitality as well. So uh, hopefully that can give us strength in the first leg of the treble. Mm, yeah, that's good. And let me recap Steve's selection in race number six. The banker, number two, Gorgeous Fatality, with selections number seven, Ace Talent, and number six, Patrice. And now that's my turn to talk about race number seven. It is quite a in, quite an interesting race. It is a class three over the thousand meters. Uh, when I first look at the field in this race, first of all, I was thinking about the pace. I believe it is going to be a very fast race with a really good tempo. As we see that uh, there will be super excellent with very lightweight here and he should be the uh, possible leader. He's always fast, always breaks well from the draw and uh, along with number seven, Amazing Rocky from a wide draw, I believe these two horses will be going in front in this race and as a result the tempo will be a bit fast so I will be looking for some horses that will be staying in some good position in the midfield or or even at the back. So my banker will be number six, Heroic Master that uh, we just discussed, Frankie Law Stables. He's sending a lot of uh, horses with good chances tonight. So Heroic Master, good draw, gate number one with the best jockey on board, Zach Purden. And uh, this time he will be returning back to his winning distance because last season he performed really well over the same course and distance he scored one win and two placings here but uh after that he uh, stepped up to 1200 meters but uh he did not have any other breakthrough so i think this time moving back to this uh, his favorable trip is a uh, good decision and also before this uh, uh start he also have some good barrier trial performance and i definitely believe that five year old is still very competitive here. So I will have number six, Heroic Master, as my banker. 
And for my selections, number two, uh, California Deeply, breaking from gates number four and written by Matthew Chadwick. I believe uh, he as a four-year-old but, uh, son by Diffie will be still improving this year. And uh, last season, he had uh, nine attempts in Hong Kong. He broke the maiden in Hong Kong on his second start, showing a great turn of foot, and then win again uh on in December last year. So uh, after that, uh, his weight was uh, putting up a bit. So as a back marker over the shortest distance at Happy Valley, it was not easy for him to chase well in every start. But uh, generally speaking, I quite uh, I was quite impressed by his uh, turn of foot. And also this year as a four year old, I believe he is improving. And also on his uh, recent barrier trial, uh, at Chongfa, he also did well, especially I like his gait speed because he was staying in front at that barrier trial. So I think uh, maybe in this season, he is now more mature and mature, and maybe he will be having another riding title here. So with a good draw, I think he may be staying in the midfield here. So as I just mentioned, the tempo here is quite fast. So maybe quite favorable for number two, California Speedly. And another horse that I'm going to select will be an outsider. That is uh, number 11, Party Warrior. The current price of him will be $35. I think uh, it was quite a good outsider here. At a rating of 61, he is still able to race in class three. And I think he's quite competitive here he, because of the uh, life weight. He will be ridden by Matthew Trevick this time, so only carrying 140 pounds, uh, 14 pounds will be quite uh, ideal for him. As a back marker and also uh, the 1,000 meters over Happy Valley is also suitable for him. Uh, we see that last uh, season, he also raced over this course and distance and he was not beaten far. And so this time, I think, as we just mentioned, with the uh, fast tempo here, will be favorable for some midfielder or back marker. So number 11, Party Warrior with a lightweight, um, he's still having quite a good chance. So to recap, uh, uh, so, sorry, but uh, let me ask Nathan first, what do you think about race seven? Any other horse you like? Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head in terms of the speed here, Shereen. I think there's a lot of tempo where we can sort of look for some uh, runners at the back that will be storming home late. California Deeply, I've had, I've had a lot of time for. Been a little bit disappointing in terms of you know, putting it all together and getting those victories on the board. Always the eye catcher uh, in a lot of his races. But the one that I'm going to give a spruit to on a bit of an each-way basis is actually number one here, Atomic Force. Now, First up, last preparation, he came off a spell and he actually beat home Season's Wit. Now, Season's Wit's a horse I've got a lot of time for. I think that horse is very, very progressive. Um, from there, he sort of, you know, he, he stayed in Class 3. He was okay behind We Are Hero down the Chartin straight, which I don't think he liked. And then from there on, he was up in Class 2 company um, at Happy Valley and didn't quite put it all together. Uh, and I think back in grade here, back to class three off his rating, I think he's very, very competitive here. He comes back first up. Hasn't had any trials or anything like that, so I'd imagine he's going well enough at home uh, for Casper Founds. And the fact he draws gate six, like you said, Shereen, with all the speed engaged here, I think if there's one at an each-way price we can back with some confidence and he'll be zooming home late, that's going to be Atomic Force. And he's got a decent strike rate here, the four-year-old girling. 18 starts for four wins and three minors to his name. So you can take on trust. He's going to run pretty well. It's just whether or not he can run well fresh. And as indicators say, um, in the past he has six starts in the class for two wins, Four starts for a win first up. So this is sort of when you want to be backing him and you're getting him at a nice price as well. So for me, I'm happy to have a little each way spec on Atomic Force. And then like you you, you alluded to, a heroic master. I mean, from back gate one, Purton on, uh, a bunch of ticks. And the Frankie Law Yard, like you said, a, a nice hand at Happy Valley tonight. So uh, clearly the CY you got that on top. Another one, uh, Magniac, you know, another horse that I've had time for. Failed at the end of last prep, but comes here well enough as well. But I think the each way horse that I'm really keen on to specs, maybe Atomic Force to chuck in your multiples um, moving forward mm. if you're having a bet that way tonight. So, But again, a really, really tough race, this one, I thought. Yeah, right. Quite a lot of good, uh, great sprinters in the field. And yeah, right. Atomic Force as a class dropper is really classy here. And Magnet, case number three and still improving as a four-year-old. But uh, back in the distance of uh, the thousand meters, I also think he is uh, quite uh, not ruled out. And Steve, I know you also like Heronic Master, but uh, any other horse you like here in this race? In this race? 
Yeah, I thought it was a you know take away atomic um, sorry heroic master, and it's you know it's, it's a, a pretty open race. I, I've always had a soft spot for Harmony and Blessed, a horse that's had a couple of setbacks in his career, but he returned to something like his old self in the second half of last season. He defeated Seasons Wit in April, and then Seasons Wit became his nemesis. He was behind him three times, second, second, and third to the same horse. His mark of seventy five is no gift, but he won off seventy seven earlier in his career. And uh, he shaped well enough in the recent trial. Gate nine is tricky, but I think he can still run his race. Um, Harmony and blessed, but um, I do, I do like the selection. I think Shireen, you've nailed it here. He was a, a very, he's unable to build in his course and distance success of last season, but he's off sixty-eight now, three pounds above his last winning mark, and uh, Zach Purton booked. And as you say, his last four runs over 1,200 metres. But I think the min minimum trip is his uh, optimum distance. And he can stalk the pace. And it's pretty much guaranteed pace because he has uh, El Trailblazer, Super Axiom next door. Nathan, good point about Atomic Force. Twice a winner in Chanty, France. And uh, came out last season on, day on his um, seasonal debut and won. But a lot of the other horses, I think, you could possibly discount. I mean, Explosive Witness isn't getting any younger at nine. Magniac is interesting, but it's been more proven over 1,200 metres. Amazing Rocky, I think he just looks a bit... He's got a mountain to climb, I think, in here, possibly. Um, Humble Star, High Rise Soldier, I think, has always been found wanting in this grade for all that he always gives his best. And Party Warrior, an interesting horse, en enigmatic sort. I always think he does what he wants when he wants, but um, on his day, he's capable... But, uh, yeah, just a, a very interesting race. And California Deeply, a nice horse. But I think the handicapper, when he won back-to-back -back last season, the handicapper really, he looks in the grip of the handicapper and maybe need to go down to sort of mid-70s before he before he um, comes good again. But, yeah, Heroic Master, I think you've really picked a good one here. But uh, even from gate nine, I think Harmony and Bless will probably run his race. Yeah, right. So uh seems it is quite tricky in race seven. But... Uh... Three of us agree with uh, my banker that, that uh, Heroic Master is having a good chance here, but uh, maybe two selections in this way is uh, not enough. So maybe you should, uh, our audience, you should also include that uh, horses that Steve and Nathan just mentioned. Um, to recap race seven, my banker will be number six, Heroic Master, with the selections number two, California Dibley, and number 11, Party Warrior. So that's all for our tips today at Happy Valley. Uh, I hope you enjoy our show and we'll see you next time for the Sha Team preview. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.